OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Apps for mobile devices in the adult ed class. OTAN Technology and Distance Learning Symposium 2020. So again, my name is Francisco Pineda. I'm the lead instructor slash uh, uh, for Solid Dad Adult School and also the OTAN subject matter expert trainer. So today's session is going to be on implementing apps and mobile and you, for your mobile devices in and out of the classroom. Now, uh, you have a handout that is going around, okay? In that handout, I have listed all the apps and websites that I will be covering. And then on the back side, you have the correlation to the um, civic objectives that you could use it to if you're doing one of these um, civic objectives. Most of mine relate to uh, job readiness skills, job prepara preparation skills. So you'll see that next to the app's name, it's going to say what co-ops they could um, relate to, that you could use it. It's not to do that civics task, but is that you could use it as a complement, as I call it. Uh, OTAN, a little bit about me. I've been an ESL instructor at Soledad Adult School since 2004, up until 2000. Well, presently I still am. Also, I'm the lead instructor as of last year. And a lot of people say, well, what is the lead instructor technically director to? Yes. Just with a, another title. <laughs> I've also been a subject matter expert from uh, since uh, 2010 for uh, OTAN and also have been an, uh, a CalPRO trainer since 2017. So. Thanks to Sudi. <laughs> uh, about OTAN, again, our vision is to lead California's uh, adult ed instructors into the implementation of technology in your classroom. And that's the goal that we have in OTAN is for you to use all these devices that some of your students have already, mobile phones, tablets, uh, in the classroom. And again, most of these apps work for any type of tablet. It doesn't have to be a high expensive one or even a cell phone. Some of my students use their phones that they get for free if they qualify, you know, outside of the grocery store and things like that. I mean, uh, or some of the tablets. We have a lot of nonprofit organizations in our area that do drives where you could do purchase a Chromebook or even a iPad at a very low cost. So doesn't you don't need the expensive technology to do this. Uh, why technology? Because of our adult ed students are very tech savvy. So we're getting a lot of those 20 to mid-30s that are very tech savvy. Uh, and they're the ones also helping our seasoned students uh, come up to date with their technology. Also, the cost of technology is a lot cheaper than not even a decade ago, just a few years ago. Technology prices have gone down. And jobs related to technology are expected to increase by 23% by this year. So this is uh, information from the... California Workforce Development Board, their strategic plan from 2016 to 2020, where it says that most of the jobs are gonna be, really, are gonna be using technology by this year. And I asked my students, a lot of them are uh, seasonal farm workers, and they're like, yeah, we use the tablet now to program what time the sprinklers are gonna go off in the field. So instead of going at two in the morning to turn on the pump, and at 6 a.m. to turn off the pump and go to another field, now they control it with a tablet but they need to know exactly what field they're gonna be irrigating because if they select the wrong field and the seedlings are this big and it gets a lot of water, that's a whole uh, crop damage right there. So they have to use, they're using this technology in jobs like that, okay? So how to use technology in your classroom? So you use tablets, mobile devices, bring your own device. That's how I started doing mine. I would have the students bring in their own uh, mobile device uh, we would connect to the school's student Wi-Fi, or sometimes I would have a hotspot, and they would pair share, because not everybody had a phone back in 2013-14. Now, usually in a, whole cl in a class of 20, I might have one that might not have a, a smartphone. I, you know, uh, still pair them up with someone at our off-site locations. Also, we encourage students to take uh, computer literacy classes at our, at, our, um, at our site or somewhere else. So we have a lot of community um, organizations that go out and do trainings for people. The city of Soledad also has done that, the city of Gonzales. So if we're full, we recommend them to go uh, somewhere else to get these uh, literacy, uh, digital literacy skills. So some of the free apps that I use and we use as educators and also as students, the students could use at home. 
Uh, they use at school, and we're also uh, starting to use it for blended instruction because uh, we only have classes Monday through Thursday, so Friday is when we tell the students, okay, we want you to go at least an hour, hour and a half on whatever, whatever app they're using, and then that way uh, on Monday we talk about what, what lesson did you do, how did you, is anybody else in the class doing the same lesson? They would kind of talk and be like, oh, I like this, I needed help with that. So they kind of help each other and the teacher facilitates uh, that as well. The first app that I use for student communication is Remind. So first I'm going to go through the PowerPoint and then I'm going to show you the actual app so you could see how they work. So with Remind is a great way to send uh, information with students. It's a good way to connect with them because sometimes I get students who are absent the whole week and our policy is after a certain amount of hours they get dropped and I don't want to drop them and then they come back and have to go on a waiting list. So sometimes I just send a simple text message. Hey, how are you? We'll miss you in class. Hope everything's going okay. Oh, I've been sick and this, and but I'll come back Monday. And then they come back Monday and everybody knows it happens. Uh, sending announcements. So instead of having to do copies for flyers, for meetings, uh, next week is this week, upcoming week is parent conference in our district. Instead of printing out and making copies of flyers, remember these are the questions to ask your teacher. We just send it automatically through Remind. It also fosters student communication. I send sometimes for the two classes I teach a good morning message, reminder, see you at six o'clock today, and I'm able to see their responses and see how they're communicating with me. I tell my students, don't use emojis, don't use LOL, don't use abbreviations, use a complete sentence. And I am starting to see how they're improving in their, um, when they're uh, writing something. So instead of just a yes, no, or happy face, now they're able to elaborate a little bit more. USA Learns are other, and again, the app is free now, as of, I believe, the fall of uh, 2019. There are, if I'm mistaken, four or five levels. I need to double check on that. Um, for the U, and this is, again, is the app, and there's also the website, so I'm gonna be covering both. So the app is really nice, because the students could download them on their mobile device and use them in class, outside of class, uh, anytime. It's also available. A typo over here. <laughs> it's also available on the computer at usalearns.org, and it incorporates video, audio, and speaking. So this one is nice because it's again, it's free for the students, and the the app is you know just a certain percent of the actual website. So I always encourage my students, you know, we'll use uh, the website one so you could compare uh, both of them. For our low beginning literacy students, we use this free app called Phonics Genius. With Phonics Genius, it's like flashcards of word families that they use. They listen to the native, I call it the native voice or you know the, the English speaker. And then they could also record and compare their voice to the native, um, to the native speaker. So this one is nice because it starts introducing them with the short sounds, the long sounds, and then word families. So a lot of the times at the beginning level, this is the type of help the students need. And then we encourage them, get the free app and practice it at home. And you know, you start hearing their pronunciation improve after, after a while. A story I like to share is a student that we have who speaks uh, only Pashto, but she is not uh, literate in her native language. So for her using this, she's picking up a lot of the English pronunciation very well. And you know, we were very surprised how she is, uh, her pronunciation has improved in about a four month time period. And she uses Phonics Genius and also some other apps that we use in the classroom. Of course, US Citizenship Podcast, the app, Teacher Jennifer. Um, we use this one in our citizenship prep program, but we also do it when we talk about things like Constitution Day. And we also talk about, well, um, in June, we talk about Independence Day. Uh, things like that because we don't have classes in July. But right here, it's very nice because it's updated like on a daily basis. I always say, I don't know how teacher Jennifer does it. She updates every day. Does she sleep? Does she know what sleep is? <laughs> and the reason why my students like it is because they could hear a lot of the mock interviews. Yeah. And because like it was like, uh, said yesterday at your session, a lot of times, the or I think it was your session, some of the students think that the USCIS uh, person is gonna speak like the teacher does. Yeah. But when they hear different accents, they're like, oh, wait a minute, it's, um, I don't have to speak perfect English. And they're able to hear that 
Uh, on the actual website, there's actual videos, and the students really, really like those. There's also civics and history lessons. Again, it is free. Uh, this app is only available on iOS tablets, iPads, okay? Uh, it used to be available on Android devices. I guess with the new version, it's not. So this is the new version of a whiteboard. So when I started teaching elementary, each student, I was doing a second grade, they had their little whiteboard, and I would put a math problem on the board, and okay, they would write on the marker, and then they would raise it up and show it to me, right? I'll be like, show me. So this is the new techie way of doing that. So it's an app, it turns your mobile device into a whiteboard. So for this one, we use it with the iPad. Uh, students can use it for math problems and show their answers. So instead of having the student come up to the board, uh, we have, in our, in our district, we have um, Apple, so we have the, the TV with the Apple, um, Apple TV. So they're able to airplay and show us and give us step-by-step -step how to do that. And they're actually writing it out and you could see it on the TV screens. Uh, we also use it for sentence, math problems, things like that. You could choose different gra uh, backgrounds for graphing as well, so for our high set instructors. Uh, and doing coordinates and also writing. We have a lot of Arabic speaking students who are used to writing from right to left. And with this one, we teach them how to write from left to right. So instead of wasting and wasting and wasting and wasting paper, they could just go on here and start practicing um, with it. Here to career, this is the one that we use a lot for our high school equivalency and our high school diploma students. So now this app is great. Uh, it's Sometimes it is a little bit glitchy, so what I found out is just to delete the app and then reinstall it again. So what it does, it provides information on local community colleges. So this, this one here provides information on courses they offer and degrees. Uh, it offers career pathways, a career quiz, and they've also added an interest quiz where you kind of answer those questions and it tells you, based on your responses, these are the jobs that are a good match for you, and then you click on it, and these are the resources. So it's very, very good for career exploration, but we do have a lot of our high school diploma students actually go on here and see, we only have one local community college, so they're able to see what is offered there and what uh, degrees they could get and what would be the average pay with that degree. So this one's really good, and we'll look at it as well. Job readiness simulation games. Uh, here to career, and it's on your handout as well. I believe all of the apps that I have on the side, it says the free apps. Uh, th that one should be, okay. So uh, the name's right there. So again, it's really good. A lot of the students really use it, and then it can, uh, the students click on it. Sometimes it takes them to the actual website of the school for their financial aid, the contact person. So it has everything right there. So the student doesn't have to go out and search additionally, it could just do um, from a click, okay? Job simulations, uh, again, these mainly are, um, we use it for some of the co-ops that we do for job readiness. Uh, adult learners, they're very interesting this year, well, my group is, well, our group is, because they really are not into games. So when we did the, the co-op, and we're like, okay, we're gonna play this game, they were a little bit hesitant, so I ended up doing it as a whole class, and then once they saw how it was done, they were playing with it. But we do use this one again with our high school diploma students, so we want them to prepare to get a job, and it's just a job simulation. Uh, one of them is get, uh, job pro get hired, job pro get dressed, job pro get prepared. So with get hired, it's a mock interview, and a lot of things go on, like this person's cell phone rings, and you're not making eye contact, so you have to quickly fix those errors and you're getting points. Uh, get dressed is, it tells you you have a job interview in an amusement park. How are you gonna dress up? You have a job interview at a uh, hotel as a receptionist. How are you gonna dress? And based on how you dress, it scores you and then it'll tell you the possibilities of getting hired or not and then why or what are some of the, the problems with it. This one here is more for productivity, genius scan. Sometimes you've run out of handouts, if you still use handouts, or you need to scan something and you don't have a scanner. This one turns in your tablet or even your smartphone into a scanner, and you could scan the picture and email it to yourself, to your students, put it on your Google Drive, 
uh, or email it directly to the students or I send it on Remind. So sometimes if there's a handout or something that they really want a copy of, I just uh, click it, scan it, and uh, send it to them. So then, and that's why I kind of chose one that will work with both because in our class it's about a 50-50. So I don't want to ha have the students feel that, oh, I need to go buy it you know, spend this money. So this app works great. Now I'm pretty sure there is a Google or, or a Android alternative or something similar because now I'm starting to see a lot of the features from iOS being incorporated into, um... oh, it is? Oh, okay, good. So in Android, it, it's okay. Uh, some of the websites that we use at home, at home, at school, uh, that the students could use at school, they could use at home, and we use it for blended learning is again, usalearns.org. So this one, we use it mainly for our uh, intermediate advanced students because some of the, um, and I mean, I could use it with the beginning students, but for that one, we do use a paid subscription app that is only for our beginning students. This one for our intermediate students, we use uh, USA Learns. Uh, they're interactive lessons, and now we're also incorporated into our citizenship class because it has video, it has audio, it's very, very well uh, developed. And again, the citizenship prep is only available, it's not available as an app, it's only the actual website. With USA Learns, you could set up the teacher, uh, set up a teacher account, add your students and monitor your students. And that's how we know. So Monday morning, Ms. Fausto, the teacher, she'll be like, oh, half of the class was on Friday, the other half, what happened? And then, of course, you hear every excuse in the book, but then the teachers are like, this is part of your class assignment, is at least an hour, hour and a half over the weekend, go on this site with yourself, with your family, with, you know, some, and some it's the whole uh, mom and the children doing it together, or dad and the children doing it together as a family. So we always encourage that as well, and we do check. Hmm? Typing.com. Typing is such an important skill for our students to know because many times something as simple as applying for a job or uh, we had just recently a student who opened up for their social security, they, they retired. So they need to have the typing skills needed to, um, to do these tasks. So on the computer, again, this one is, is a website on the computer you would use uh, typing. Now, of course, you could have the keyboard for the tablet, but I still feel it for this, you still need to use a computer. Uh, and also it teaches typing skills to students, it's interactive lessons and activities. Again, you sign up as a teacher, free account, and add your students, and you could keep track of their uh, typing. Our goal at the beginning of the year in August is for the student that by June, they're typing at least 40 words per minute because in Soledad, our largest employer besides the County of Monterey, is the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, Salinas Valley State Prison, and they're always hiring office technicians. Their minimum requirement of typing is 40 words per minute. The city of Soledad is also 40 words per minute. Uh, Soledad Unified School District is also 40 words per minute. So by then, at the end of the year, they have something, and we print out a certificate once they reach that benchmark, and say, here's something that you could use in your, um, when you're applying for a job that you have these typing skills needed. And again, it's, uh, it's free. This one again is only for Spanish. And I always <laughs> follow up emails and be like, we went to the site, but it's only in Spanish, not in English. This is only a Spanish site for high school equivalency preparation. Estoy aprendiendo, estoy hyphen aprendiendo punto com. And on this one here, it has, uh, the students could select the subjects. They could select the test that they're using, high set. Pearson View, GED, or TASC. Again, here in California, it's only the first two, uh, but in other states, also a uh, TASC. Uh, so the student will go on there, and if they're learning, for example, mathematics and fractions, they would go math, and it's broken down by sections. And it has, uh, I always call it the, it's kind of like Khan Academy, um, but in Spanish. And then sometimes, because it is in Spanish, you hear the Spanish from other countries, not only from Mexico, but from South America or, for, or from Spain. So sometimes the students are like, wait a minute, why does this sound different? Why are they saying these words? I'm like, oh, it's because it's, it, they, you know, they collect all that information from Spanish. It might not be Spanish from Mexico. It might be Spanish from, from Spain. So they hear all these different accents. But again, it covers all of the subjects that are in these uh, high school uh, equivalency exams, okay?
we were running into a little bit of trouble at our district with Khan Academy because they updated the um, firewalls and everything. So that was one of the reasons why we went to this one. And then in Khan Academy, there had to be a lot of navigation. You click here, then you go here, then you go here, then you click here to get here, to get here, to get here, to get here. With this one, it's very easy. I want math, it has all the things. They still have to click, but it's easier. And my Spanish high set instructor, she's here. And actually, I like to brag about her because she's getting the state award for CCA this year because the, the students are using this in addition to, to her, um, her classroom instruction. And come, come uh, this past January, she's all like, hey, I have a problem. I'm like, oh God, what happened? <laughs> it's the first day of school. I don't have students. And I looked at her, I'm like, oh, why? Yeah. She's all like, they all passed, they're high set. Oh, so <laughs> that was a good problem to have. Now again, we've built up, we're at, um, we're at uh, bursting at the seams again with her, but that's one of the reasons why she's getting a state award uh, next month, wow. because using this, using other uh, material that she develops and, and just in the classroom instruction, she's able to um, have her students pass. I always like to thank our technology department at Soledad Unified School District. They are awesome. Without them, I couldn't implement all my crazy ideas that I come up sometimes at two in the morning. Okay, I literally do. And they're always there to support us. They're always there. So I always like to thank them because without them, none of this um, we could do for us and then teach to our students. And uh, yesterday in one of the sessions, they were talking about that. Well, how do you build that connection? Offer what you know, the skills that you know with technology. Say, hey, hey, I know how to do this, this, and this. For a, a district PD, I'm a resource available and you don't have to pay me thousands of dollars like they do for other people to come in and teach them how to use basic things that we might know how to do. So with that, you got them. You got them and whatever crazy idea you might have, the most recent one is uh, the district now blocks YouTube. So they actually created a um, network, Soledad Adult School, SUSD, with a login that allows our students to watch um, YouTube video for, because a lot of the Estoy Aprendiendo videos are also YouTube. So that, now with that, we, we um, were able to do it. On the handout, you do have my contact information if you wanna email me, uh, please feel free to do so. So I'm gonna run by the app. So on this one, remind here, I have it set up by classes. So usually for our computer class, the uh, computer class, so every Monday, I would send, and then I also send information, like recently I was in Greece, as Jennifer said she wanted to see pictures, so I would send them pictures of me in Greece, and then on Monday, I don't, I don't know if you could really see it, but it says, good morning, see you in class at six tonight. Something like that, I always have a full class, because I take that two, three seconds of my time to, um, to reach out to them. And then sometimes, let's see, they respond, okay, have a good day. And then sometimes they put, uh, if they're gonna be absent, so for example, this is a student who was coming to class and now she can't, but she's still using the apps and everything, and she's always checking in with us. She said, good morning, teacher, how are you? How is work? I, I hope you are all fine. How is teacher Vanessa? Is everybody okay? Bye, have a nice evening. <laughs> So I actually followed up with a phone call with that one because I'm like, I had a text message for something that sweet, it can't, it can't be. The Show Me app, and again, I'm not going in order, I'm just kind of so, it's not in order as, as in your app. The Show Me app, one of the things that I always, and I like it because you could add a picture. Okay, great. So pretend there's a picture of the door here, and then I could easily put door. So we're imagining I took a picture of that. And then over here, if I got that little corner, I would put um, the school map. So having the picture here, you see this beautiful picture right here, because I see it, I hope you all see it too. <laughs> so you could easily identify. And then with our low beginning students, they use the iPad, there's a garden outside our classroom, they take pictures and then they label uh, the color of the plant or what if they actually know the name of the plant. So that's one of them and then you could easily, um, uh, erase. Uh, choose a background. Again, this is where I'm talking about. You could choose this type of paper. Uh, there was one year where I had to show the students how to write notes. 
So I would use this one a lot. And then of course this thing has a stylus, but you could still use your finger. Uh, let's see here. And then you're also, when you're teaching about math and coordinates, graph paper. So again, it could be used for a lot of different, uh, different things. This is an activity that we did is why, um, if your goal is to speak English, give us ideas of what you could do at home or in the classroom to reach that goal. And they're like, listen to English audio. So as they're saying, I'm writing it with my finger or with the, if your device has a stylus. So again, and then the students could do this one as well in a group, if they don't wanna each have. Again, you could create an account. I, for my students, I don't. I just have them go on the default one. Uh, this one is, let's see here, the Genius Scan, again, so we all kind of know how to do it. So for example, this one was a, I needed a copy of what, a, um, you know, I got a new student in class, I only had 15 books. Well, I need to give them a book, I'm not gonna order more, but I just, you know, made a, a copy because I'm using it for educational purposes, I'm not selling it to them. And then I could also annotate on it. So that's another benefit if it was an actual um, handout, whoops, do that, okay. Uh, phonics Genius, <clears throat> so for example, the this one here, so then you would hear like anchor, and then the student would repeat. So it's emphasizing. Oh. Alligator, ambulance, axe, alphabet. So they're hearing the ah sound, so, and then they could record, for example. Attic. Attic, 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 add. So they could hear it. Now with this one, I would recommend, you know, if they have um, headphones on, because then it gets a little loud. Uh, this one here, let's see the get higher. <clears throat> so for example, if you're starting to slouch, it says sit up straight. This is the how you would do that. Uh, swipe to make eye contact, and then it's telling you. So there's a cell phone, so you want it off, you want to ignore. So it's giving you the commands. So for example, what is your favorite color? And then you would choose the correct answer, and then it will assign you points. So again, it's um, you do have to be a little bit quick as some uh, I tell my students, but again, this one I incorporate it when we're doing the job readiness preparation for uh, the civics task in our ESL class. Another one that, um, because students don't realize the importance of getting dressed, even for coming to class. So sometimes when we have a presenter or so, we've had workforce development board come to our class, I don't even tell the students, but that day they all come up dressed very nice, okay? And you could see their attitude in class is very different. It's much more focused. It's I'm here to do something. So now we're implementing a, a dress to work day. And that day, I just see the type of productivity just skyrocket because they take it more serious than if they're coming in casual uh, clothing. And a lot of our students say, oh, I feel so good, like dressing up and I feel so important. I'm like, well, first of all, you are important. And second of all, it helps them build their self-esteem as well. And then also for our citizen, that's an interview. And I always tell them, it doesn't have to be for a job. It could be like for your citizenship. It could be an uh, interview, for example, uh, our, our consortium did a consortium survey and they were interviewing students. And even for something like that, they would get all you know dressed up. And some of them were nervous and we would tell them like what to expect in an interview. So for example, on this one, if I'm gonna work at a hotel, again, it limits you sometimes to options uh, because I'm using the free version. So I'm gonna apply as a housekeeper. So then I could select the gender and then I could select the type of hairdo. You can't really see it that well. So yeah, pretty much. And then type of shirt that you would wear type of pants, then the shoes. So I always go to the extreme for something. <laughs> then earrings and a necklace. So then we would be like, okay, if they're applying for a hotel receptionist or any receptionist, is this the appropriate um, 
how to be dressed for that interview? Some of them might say yes, but the majority would say no. And then we would say, why? What could we change? How could we change? Oh, well, teacher, tienen que ser más elegantes. I'm like, well, what's your definition of elegant? Because for him, this might be his definition of dressing up elegant. So then that starts a whole other conversation. And again, <clears throat> this is what I want with my students, is to be able to give me ideas and give the class ideas of how should you dress for an interview or how should you dress for... for the <laughs> so this week is parent conference. So we just did this about two weeks, three weeks ago. And one of the students said, so for the teacher conference, do we have to dress up too? Because that's an interview. I'm like... I mean, you don't have to, but <laughs> it's a good practice. And then at our site, the teachers know which students go to class. And so they purposely um, ask them more things and try to get more information. And then they actually do tell me. Uh, with USA Learns, the app. OK, we heard that. It's, and then here the topic is, it first starts with a video. And then the new Address. words. Cafe. And if I want to hear it again, I press on the little microphone, uh, the speaker. Cafe. House. And if I don't know the word, I could star it. That way I um, review it later. Market. And what I like about the app is on the actual site, you do have some ads, and that's how they get paid. I always get that group of students who clicks on the ad, and they're like, why am I seeing um, coupons? I'm like, oh, that's because you clicked somewhere else. <laughs> Same thing here. I always tell them, try to avoid this area because it'll direct you to their Facebook, which is good. But then you always have to let them know a lot of these apps that are free are, are maintained free by having ads. So that's another skill you could teach them. So once Office. we go through the whole words. Park, school, street, house. See, that's the one I had started. And then here, it's going to show you the picture, and the student selects which one it is. So this one here, if I say, oh, oh <laughs> that's the actual name of the grocery store in Soledad. So I would say, it's a incorrect. And then this one here would be a, OK. So this is how USA Learns uh, works, and then it has, it continues. So uh, the students could really do a lot with it on their mobile device. Uh, but again, I always encourage using the actual um, uh, website. One of them that I didn't talk about, but I really like to use is uh, Google Docs, because a, as part of the civic task, the students had to do a resume. So for this one here, each of the students created a Gmail account because, of course, they always forget what it was to activate their phones. So we create one, and I kind of give them how they should create it and how their password should be, like initial, either your phone number or something that's easy to remember, and then an exclamation mark. And then here, they could actually do their own resume. So here on your name, you would just tap on it, and we could even do it on the iPad. So, and again, students have done typing, typing.com, so they're able to do this fairly quickly. So they could develop their own resume, cover letter. Once they're done, they could email it to themselves, email it to me so I could print it out in class, uh, and so forth. So again, I didn't really uh, show this one in my presentation because I always seem to run out of time. Uh, the Here to Career app. Oh, it's this way now. So because I barely uh, installed it on this iPad, it's going to ask me to take a quiz. But I could say, find a community college, find a career, explore hundreds of careers and degrees, discover what you can do here. So if I want to find a community college, usually it's able to find it by location. But that sometimes doesn't seem to work. So for example, Let's say I live in San Francisco and I'm at City of San Francisco, uh, City College of San Francisco. It's going to give me the information. There's 26,560 students enrolled. Um, apply to this college. It takes me to the to the website. So it's all right there. Some of the schools do have an actual 
And then you could see all the degrees that are earned. Accounting, administration of justice, aircraft electronics, avionics, uh, uh, um, alcohol and substance control, uh, automotive collision repair. And then it tells you for the field you selected, what is the average salary in that field? And then what are careers related to that? So uh, in this activity where we're doing on career exploration, the student not only identified what career they wanted to choose, but also what are other areas that feed into that career and how much money they could make. And this is a real eye-opener for students because they start seeing different types of jobs and then they always go to teacher and they're like, really, this is what a teacher earns? They're like, you mean uh, auto technician or an auto mechanic earns more than a teacher? I'm like, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because all of their goal is to be a teacher, but they have to support a family, they have to do this. And then what, once they start seeing what degrees are available and how much they could possibly earn, that is a good, um, uh, you know, a good in, uh, eye opener for a lot of them that they always think that teachers earn, you know, way up here when we know what the reality is. Uh, let's see. So we have about 10, nine minutes, right? So any questions on any apps or any other apps or websites that you know of that we would all benefit from? But even again, for low literacy skills, most of them, you know, and of course, for, for one student in particular, it takes me having to be working with the student while the rest of them are working together. But I don't think to that level, these free ones, no. Some of the paid ones might. Yes, I could. So Epic is one that I would uh, talk about a few years ago. So what Epic is, it's an app. So think of it as Netflix, but for books, okay? Uh, this one here I would use with my low literacy, even in a family literacy program. I wouldn't use this with my advanced students. Now for history, it's great because you could find a lot of nice books about history. For example, last week uh, for for teach, uh, not teacher, for Dr. Seuss Day, I went to go read um, at one of the local elementary schools. And because I had just been back from my trip, I decided to read a book about, um, about Greece. So it has books about different countries. Oops and things like that. So I was able to uh, actually um, to read this book to the students. So with that one, if you're studying about history, the presidents, it would have books like this. Uh, some of them, it has books that are you read to, uh, and then it has, what I like about Epic is they're starting to include not only the accelerated reader level, AR, if you have students, but also the Lexile level. So uh, you could email me and I could send you a handout if you deal with CASAS testing what their CASA score is and how it relates to their Lexile level. So with that, we have this one installed in our, in our iPad. So the student, if they wanna read books at their Lexile level, they could actually search books at their Lexile level uh, or at the public library as well to check out books like that. So with Epic, it's like Netflix, but with books. So if you have children, we're starting to incorporate into our family lit program as well. Um, it is free, you would have to create a teacher account but now it's only, students could only use it in the classroom. I don't know how it determines when you're outside the classroom, but sometimes I wanna use it at home and it says, oh, you need to buy the $4.99 a month subscription. But when I'm using it in the classroom or in, in our, within our district um, server, it's free. I don't know how, I don't know how they, how, probably. But yeah, Epic's really nice because you could set it up by class and then uh, the student could download the app, but again, I would recommend something like this. And then you get the actual feel of swiping a, um, a page. We're so glad you loved. So, <laughs> what this one does have, uh, recently they added books in Spanish, Chinese, and French. So hopefully as time goes by, they would add more languages and maybe it could be a resource that would fit with, uh, with your... I know uh, there are some libraries, I can't exactly remember where, but a lot of libraries, and maybe you could speak to this, of the resources the libraries have. I know somewhere, and I, I wanna say it was down south, they actually had this um, as one of their um, subscriptions that was available through the library. 
I think the reason is because they, they're moving more to less free and more subscription, like Netflix, right, Netflix. So I always say it's the book version of Netflix for kids. But I know, uh, check with your public library. They also have a lot of like Learning Express, uh, a lot of sites that you would pay for. They're free with your, um, with your library. And some of them also have resources on apps. And some counties also have resources. I know um, up in Napa, in that area, their county office of ed has a lot of apps that they use for family literacy and beginning literacy. Well, what I did is we were having a lot of trouble with our network last year. So I requested um, hotspots and they were able to, from school. So this one connects 15 devices. Again, it's not gonna be the fastest thing in the world, but at least for basic web browsing or things like that. Uh, another thing, cause we uh, do run into this issue quite often. Uh, sometimes the students have the unlimited data account and I tell them, oh, if you hotspot, you could use it as your hotspot. Then I kind of show them how to use it. And they're like, okay, I could hotspot this group right here. And another one, yeah, I could hotspot this group. So a lot of times all it takes is asking your students. And of course, you're not going to be on it the whole class time, maybe just for something. Yeah, and if they have unlimited data or the unlimited data plans. So please, uh, <laughs> yeah, please take the time to fill out the evaluation for this session. You do have my contact information. Please feel free to contact me at any time. Um, email me and I'll get back to you if you have any suggestions or something that you need more help with.